Welcome to the workshop entitled, What Class Should I Take Next? My name is Jewel Lancaster, and I'm here with my colleague, Christy Gibbons. We are going to team up on this endeavor to provide a workshop with information on registering for classes at Alpena Community College. This is the time. It is early registration. So I'm hoping that this will encourage you, if you haven't registered already, to make that happen. So we'll start with um, what does ACC have to offer to students? And we have certificates and we have degrees. Certificates are typically found in the occupational programs. Um, a certificate can usually be completed in less than two years. Oftentimes it's just two semesters, a fall and a spring. When a student has completed successfully all the requirements for a certificate, the student is ready to go out into the world with the skills they need to perform the job. Now a degree, we have different degrees here at ACC. Some people say two-year degrees, four-year degrees. So a two-year degree can be completed in two years if a student is going full-time. And we have a number of them here at Elkin Community College. There's the Associate in Arts degree, the AA. It is usually considered to be the transfer degree. There's the Associate in Science degree with an emphasis on math and science. And that is also a degree that will transfer very well if a student is working with their advisor. We have an Associate in Applied Science, the AAS, a number of those degrees. And those degrees are typically looked at as terminal degrees. It means that the student finishes all the required coursework successfully and then again goes out into the work world and performs that job. And finally, the Associate in General Studies degree, another two-year degree if you're going full-time, that degree is meant for the student that just needs a degree. And oftentimes I'll have individuals from the community come to my office and say, Jewel, I just need to get a degree. It doesn't matter which one I want to get it through it as quickly as possible. Um, I'm employed and my employer says to get promoted and sometimes even to retain a position, I've got to have a degree. So I'll work with the student to help that student get a degree as quickly as possible. Finally, we have one four-year degree here at Elkina Community College. It's a Bachelor in Science and it's our Electrical Systems degree. Um, so if a student is not going full-time, which would mean like 15 credits fall spring, second year 15 credits fall spring, then um, a student would take longer to complete a degree. And that is absolutely fine. Doing it at your own pace and doing it well is very important and you eventually reach your academic goal. So we're going to talk about the importance of indicating your program of study. On the screen, you'll see the ACC change records form for our registrar's office. When a student comes to my office and says, I wanna sign up for my classes, I'll say, what is your program of study? When you fill out the application, whether you do it electronically or paper pencil version, you put down the program of study that you are interested in being part of here at the college. And when you make that indication, then an advisor is assigned to you, someone in that area that can help guide you um, with the choices that you make and how you proceed through this process of earning a certificate or degree. So um, figuring out what your program of study can be very important because if you, in your mind, have changed your program of study from the one you indicated when you first started here, um, and you're moving along, picking your classes in this new area, and then you get ready to graduate. If you haven't completed all the requirements that may have been added on, then you would not be able to graduate. So having a program of study that is accurate can affect your financial aid, and it can affect when you are able to graduate. So very important. I also say to students when we first meet, who is your advisor? Because that is an important person to help you make decisions here at the college. Um, if you don't know, we go to self-service and, and make those um, determinations, what's what, 
and then we will go on and and figure out um, if you're in something you want to be in and make those changes if necessary. So self-service is a wonderful tool for students here at the college. It's all about you. It tells you financial aid stuff. It tells you your course catalog, um, advising, it's all in there. So when I go in to look at students, I go to the briefcase, which is one below the mortar board. <clears throat> I do this because I look at all students. When you have gone into self-service, you're looking at just your stuff. So I go into advising overview, click on that. So back down to the briefcase. So one down from there, oh, it disappeared. There we go. And so we have a sample student that we will be using for the purposes of demonstrating all these wonderful things that you can do with self-service. So, and so, so we have our student test journal. We're going to view details and we open it up and ta-da, there is what a self-service screen would look like to students. Um, it starts out with the course plan. If you are currently enrolled, your course plan will reflect the classes that you are currently enrolled in that you're registered for this fall semester. For this student, because it's been a while since our tester student was created, um, he has completed all of his work. Um, so a very useful tool if you just wanna look at your schedule, see what you're in, see how many credits you're taking, maybe when the class is offered, anything like that available in course plan. The timeline can be a very useful feature too. Um, the back arrow that's on the left, you can, if you have more than one semester here, you can click it and all your semesters will come before you where you can see what you've taken, when you've taken it, if for some reason you need that information. But the most important tab that I use all the time when advising is the progress tab. So this student, as you can see in the upper right there, right by the little silhouette of his picture where it would be, he is in the liberal arts program. If he was currently active, and I'm saying he because the silhouette look, kind of looks like a guy, but um, if he was currently active, he would also have his advisor listed underneath. And this is where we would look to determine if you are in the right program and have an advisor that you know. Um, so, when you look through this, it tells you all the things that this student has done and all the things that this student needs to do to earn a liberal arts degree here at ACC. So, we are going to go down to where it says requirements and expand all. And now everything the student needs to do is there before us and all the choices he can make. So, the very first part that you will see requirements in uh, any degree except for the utility tech, the first thing on the screen will be the requirements for English Comp. There are six hours required to complete English Comp 1. A student could take English 111, which is our typical English course, transfers well. The 121 is an advanced English Comp 1. And that class is meant for students that want to be challenged in English. Maybe you're considering a career in writing, journalism, um, maybe they want to be an English teacher someday or just love English. But for most students, the English 111 fulfills the purposes of completing their English Comp 1. Once a student has completed that successfully, and successfully at the college level usually means a C or better, then a student would be eligible to do the second part of the requirement for English, English Comp 2. And there's three choices here. Working with an advisor, a student would probably check English 112. Again, if you love English and it would be to your benefit, might do the advanced English Comp 2, English 122. Or if you're in a technical area, your option would be English 123. I will say to you that a liberal arts student that would be planning on transferring, that English 123 might not serve well because it might not count at a transfer location as English Comp 2. So working with an advisor can help you make those kinds of decisions. 
The next category for degree that is required would be, and I think we went a little too far, would be the math science requirement. For the liberal arts degree, there are eight hours or eight credits that are required. You must have at least one lab science, and it lists all the possible lab sciences that a student could take here at ACC to complete that category, that requirement. And so if a student took the Bio 114 for credits, has a lab, um, then there would be four additional credits where a student could either pick another science class with or without a lab or could select a math class. So lots of options. Again, working with an advisor, you could make the best possible situation determinations selection. Um, after the math science credit con category for the liberal arts students, um, it goes into the humanities fine arts. Again, eight hours, eight credits are required. Here at this college, a student could take the two general survey humanities courses, humanities one and two, 241, 242, four credits each, eight credits, that category is completed. However, if a student's planning to transfer, you want to have more than one discipline. So um, below that humanities option would be the other areas where a student could select classes. So art, a language class, um, philosophy, a speech class, history, Western Civ would fall into that category. So lots of options. Um, but I am talking to students about um, selecting classes in the humanities area. I will often recommend a speech class. The reason for that is certain colleges in Michigan will not take anyone's comp one as a first comp requirement for English. Places like U of M, Michigan State will only take a comp two as their comp one English requirement. And then a student has to have a speech communications class or a public speaking class to fulfill that two English comp communication requirement. So by taking a speech class, a student is doing two things. If a student's wanting to transfer to U of M or Michigan State, and I think even El Saginaw Valley is doing it now, um, they have met that requirement for the English and communication area. But if a student isn't transferring to one of those sites, then a student would have that speech class fall into the humanities requirement. So you're not wasting any time, any effort, um, but you're covering all your bases. The next category after the humanities fine arts would be the social science. Again, eight hours or eight credits. Um, there is here at ACC an American government requirement. And students, again, have options. So a student can decide to take one political science course, either the 221 or 222, or if a student doesn't like political science, you have the option of taking two United States history classes to complete the requirement. So many students will select the political science 221 because it's one class versus two, and because political science 221 is offered every semester, including summer, with lots of sections to choose from. So it usually fits very well into a schedule. So eight credits in the social science area, and those would be the 30 general education requirements that every college student with a degree would need to complete successfully to be considered able to earn a college degree. And then for the liberal arts degree, there are 30 elective credits. So anything 100 and over that a student would enroll in would be considered an elective. Um, those electives are where you create who you want to be in the academic world. So if you are a person that wants to earn a business administration degree, which is an AA degree, you would take a bunch of business course electives like introduction to business, accounting, marketing. Um, if you wanted to be an education major and go on and get your four-year degree to become a teacher, you would take a lot of social science 
classes, maybe some humanities and history classes so that you would create who you want to be eventually out in the world of work. So 60 credits, um, 30 gen ed, 30 electives, and you have an associate of arts degree. Um, another wonderful thing about this particular tab in self-service is that you could check out something else. Let's say you started out as liberal arts, but you know, you think you'd really like to be an accounting uh, person. So you could go to view a new program and select accounting and view it. And ta-da, there is accounting. And if you go up just a little bit, it should tell you that the accounting degree is, oh, there we go, an associate in applied science. I just wasn't seeing it. So the associate in applied science, the AAS, is a very specific degree. You're going to start out with those English comp requirements, English comp one and two. Got to get those done for all these degrees. Um, but now it starts changing. Instead of saying take eight credits in math science, it says here are your math requirements. And it gives you two choices, the college algebra or the college algebra and trig. Um, so to get the degree, you'd have to take one of those classes and be successful. The next area is a speech communication requirement. It's no longer saying you have an option of picking speech. It's saying here's two speech classes, pick one of them and complete it successfully. Then it goes into the American government requirement, same kind of options that you had before. Um, so you can pick what you'd like to do. But the really interesting thing that will probably excite you will be the occupational specialty. If you want to go into the accounting AAS, you will not only take a lot of business courses and a lot of accounting courses, but you will be required to take a computer course, intro to microcomputers. You will be required to take um, other computer courses on spreadsheets that would be very important. Um, all of these things in your area of interest so that you are preparing yourself to go out into the work world and do these things in accounting. There will also be economics requirements. You'd need to take both our macro and microeconomics. Um, so when you put all of those required courses into place, you will have 60 credits again, sometimes a little more for certain AASs, and then you would be able to graduate with that degree if you've been successful. It is important to note that for the occupational specialties that students would need to do for this degree and other degrees that are AAS, um, you need to earn a C or higher, and for some of the degrees and some of the classes, you need a B or better to be able to be eligible to earn that degree. Finally, the last thing that I'd like to show you today in this tab would be again, view a new program. And now we're going to select the Michigan Transfer Agreement. So if you are planning to transfer, the MTA was created so that you can have a smoother transition to a four-year institution. Um, this would be just the 30 credits of general education classes that every student would need. Um, in all of the classes that you take for the MTA, you've got to get a C or higher, a 2.0 or higher is required in each class. So starts out with that English comp, just like all of the degrees here at ACC, comp one and comp two. Then it goes into the math requirement. So we'll go down just a little and there is the math requirement. Now, when we had talked about math before, lots of math options, but for the MTA, it has to be math at a certain level. So this area of the progress for the MTA shows you here are the math classes at ACC 
that would satisfy the MTA. And it starts out with a new course we have, Math 118, which is a quantitative reasoning class, and goes all the way up to differential equations. So lots of choices, but you've got to complete one of those with a C or better for it to count. The next category will be the Humanities Fine Arts. And you will notice it's similar, but instead of saying eight credits, it says take two courses. And it has to be from two different disciplines. So that is important to note, two different disciplines, and it lists all the different things you can select. Another difference with the MTA is you cannot take an art class that is a studio class or performing arts class. So you couldn't take a learn how to paint class or a learn how to dance class because those are studio and performing arts, but you still have lots of choices like higher level English, mythology, creative writing, philosophy, so ethics and language and reasoning, speech classes, humanities, a survey course, um, the different history classes that would qualify, um, Western Civ, so those would be options. So two classes, two different disciplines. The next category, social science, two courses, two different disciplines again, and lots of places, lots of choices that you can make. So anthropology, economics, um, cultural geography, psychology, sociology, um, make some exceptions. We have a physical geography, couldn't take that for this category. Um, so lots of choices. Again, when I talk to students, I'll say, you know, have your political science be one of your social science courses for the MTA because it will transfer well. Um, it completes this category for the MTA, but also completes the category, the requirement for the degree. So you're doing two things at once. And then finally, instead of putting math and science together, the MTA pulls it apart and says, hey, you need two natural science courses. One must be a lab science, um, and then one can be a science class without a lab. But there are your choices, lots of things to choose from, get a C or better, and it counts for the MTA. And the MTA is a, a wonderful way to protect yourself. Different universities will have all kinds of additional requirements. And then like CMU, Central Michigan University, you read all of these requirements that you have to do when you're taking your first two years of college courses. And it gets to the very end and it says, but if you have the MTA stamp, you don't have to do any of these things. So the MTA is a way to protect you, help you get what you need, so that you can move on and do what you want to do at a transfer location. So there is self-service um, for the progress tab. Go in there before you start thinking about the classes you want to take, and it will help guide you as you start checking things out. So now we're going to go into what you really want to talk about. We are going to look at the course catalog, and I go to the mortar board because you will be able to go to the course catalog as part of your screen. But for me, when I use that, it does some things that I don't want it to do. So here we are, we're going to search for classes and we are going to select the term we want, which is spring 2023. And we are going to look at different classes that are available. So we'll start out, let's say, with biology, because you want to take that lab science. We'll see what's out there. We're going to go and take a look at math, see what's happening there. And English, yeah, you probably want to do the English 112. So you go down, you select English. And let's add one more class. Let's see what's happening with the art classes. And then when you're ready to take a look, go down to the bottom, press search. And there it is. Everything says spring 2023. Everything is open right now, even though we've had a few days now of signing up for classes or the registration. Um, but I want to explain to you what these different categories mean. 
So we've looked at term, we've looked at status, everything's open that we're seeing right now. The section name. So when you have the name of the class, you Ooh. can you can go in, that's okay. When you have the name of the class, you can go in and you can um, see what that class is all about. And as Christy is going back in, anytime you have to go back, it just like takes everything off. So you go in, you pick what you wanna look at, um, and you can reset things as you need to. And biology, English, art, um, I can't even remember that. There we go. So we'll go back into search. Ta-da. So you will see that the section name, we're going to click on Art 102. And there it is. It tells you who is teaching it, which is on the main screen as well. It tells you when it will be meeting, um, where it's at, Alpena Main Campus. That can be very important because we have different locations. It tells you when the class starts, January 16th of 23 and ends May 10th of 23. How many seats? Well, all together, there are 10 seats that are available. And right now, or 10 seats overall, but seven are still available. It's a three credit class. Um, it is a graded class and it has a requisite. So if a student wanted to take Art 102, they would have had to take Art 101 before taking this course. And so requisites are oftentimes called prerequisites, very important um, when you're checking things out, whether it's an English class, a math class, um, uh, manufacturing class, there may be prerequisites or requisites that are required. Um, it gives you the course description, which can be very important as well. So there's some very important information that you might want to pop open and take a look at, especially to see if anything's required ahead of time. The purpose of having things required ahead of time is to help prepare you for success as a student. So it may be a beginning class. It may be an English 111 class. So we're gonna close out of here and we're going to go into air or scroll down just a little to grab an English 112 class. So we'll go to the next page. Everything stayed. Actually, let's do English 111, Christy, if you would. So any one of them, we're going to open it up. So let's look at the requisites. The eligibility to be a student enrolled in English 111 at ACC is determined by placement testing or by completion of English 102 with a grade of C or better. And it must be completed prior to taking this course. So those requisites are in place to help students be successful. We want you to enroll in a class where yes, you will be learning the things that you need to learn to go on and get what you want from ACC. But we also want to make sure that it is a class that you could be successful in. And that is determined by grades from other classes taken earlier or by placement testing. So we'll close out of here. And um, let's go look at biology, bio 114. So I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a good one. Well, do you have that for page? Yes. So bio 114, we are looking at the lecture right now. Um, Mr. Bellows is teaching and it says in the requisites that you need to, at the same time, take Biology 114 lab. It says you must take a prior here at ACC. You can't take just the lab prior. You would take it at the same time, which is called a required concurrent course. So our lab sciences, the lab and the lecture must be taken the same semester. So we'll close out of here. And 
let's go back up to the top. And we are going to look at an art class again. You will notice this is a new feature. Um, the Art 104 has a little dollar sign kind of in a green circle. There are additional fees. So I think if you open up the, the section name, and there it is, additional course fees. Fees listed here are in addition to general tuition and fees charged at registration. The course fees would be $75. Many of our art classes, some of our manufacturing, our automotive, there are additional fees that will be added to what a student is expected to pay for during the semester. So knowing what these things are can be very helpful to a student. Um, so we'll close out of that. And I'm going to have Christy arrow back because I want to look at um, for this term. So spring of 2023. We'll look at the computer classes, computer information systems. And she'll go down and say search. And so if we look at the CIS 171, um, when I talk to students, this is a recommended concurrent course. So CIS 171 is starts January 16th of 23 but only goes until February 17th of 2023. It is a five week course. A student completes this course, gets a C or better, and then the student is eligible to take the next course, the CIS 172. And if you close out of that, and we don't have to go into it, we can just look straight across. The CIS 122 would start February 20th and go to March 31st. So another five weeks in the middle of the semester. And then finally, if a student gets a C or better in that, the student is eligible to go to the CIS 173. Um, the third spreadsheets class starts April 3rd and goes till May 10th. And then you have those three courses, one credit each completed in one semester. It's recommended concurrent because you will use the same textbook. So instead of buying three different textbooks, you're only using the one, but you do have the option if you just wanted to take the first one during the semester or the first two, it is an option with the idea that, oh, you know what, I think I'll take that third one a year from now. Well, here's the thing. If you took it a year from now, you might have to buy a new textbook. So it's recommended concurrent, but it is not a required concurrent. So we're going to go back again to the main screen, and I want to show you how you can filter things. So we'll select the term spring 2023, and we are going to pick English. And we are going to, in course number, we're going to say 112. And then we are going to say, I can only come here to ACC on Mondays and Wednesdays. So we're going to click on that and then search. And ta-da, there are the English classes that are offered Monday, Wednesday only for English 112. Um, it is important to note, you see those remote classes, they are 7,000 level and that tells me that they are probably at a high school. And so these particular ones are at Agre, um, Talas High School, Woodmore Prescott. So those classes, even though they're remote, might be at a time that a, a student that's a, a student here at ACC would like, they are closed to and open only to students that are at those high schools. So those things are important to know. But we can see there are two sections of English 112 offered. Um, both are still open. Mr. Sexton is teaching them Monday, Wednesday only like a student wanted. So we're going to go back again, which is going to look at um, some of the other ways you can filter things. So we know that you can filter things by date, but if you go down, 
you can filter things by location. So we are going to say online. And you'll notice we didn't pick any subject area. We just want to see all the online classes right now. So when we do a search, every single class that we are offering online at ACC will show up. Um, so there'll be a few different pages of them. And if you are a student that I've got to have online classes, this is one way to see what's out there. And you'd still pay attention to all the other things, you know, do I want to take um, three different sections? Um, do I want, do I meet the prereqs or requisites? All of those things would still be part of what you want to look at. But if you need online and tr are trying to put it all together, this is one way to just see everything that's being offered this semester. So going in, if you're going to meet with an advisor and looking ahead of time, that's a great thing to do. Um, I do advising over the phone and oftentimes since I'm looking at my screen, the student will bring up their screen at home and we have a very good conversation for advising so the student can make plans. So um, lots of good things that the system can do. Take advantage of it. Okay, so we're going to talk about a relatively new feature that lots of students don't know about. We're going to go to the ACC homepage for our college. And when you go down, and I think you need to go back one more, maybe. Okay, and going down to the very bottom of the homepage, you will find popular links. So we go down and we're going to select bookstore. And in our bookstore up there, um, the tab, the textbook tab, you can click on it. And we are going to, it's automatically defaults to the semester they have loaded and it is still fall. Very shortly, it will go to spring 2023, but you can go down and select a department. We're going to say English. And we're going to say course 112. And we're going to pop open, you have to do your select section. And we're just going to pick the first one we see. We're going to do one more thing. We're going to do um, biology. And we're going to select course 114. And You've got to select the section. We're just going to pick the first one and one more. We're going to do biology. We're going to do 114 capital L. And a section. Now we're going to go down and we are going to grab those materials for three courses. And ta-da, there they are. So for this particular class in English with Dr. Homola, this is the textbook that the students needed to get for the class. It tells you the price range. It tells you if you can rent a digital version. It tells you if you want to buy here the used and the digital. Um, there's no new ones available out there for this one for a bookstore. Um, Biology 114 with Mrs. Kelly. Um, for the lecture, tells you rent, buy, here's the cost, um, the addition, all those good things. And then if you go down to look at the lab, which is on the screen, the 114, it tells you there are no books required for this course. So you can get a good idea of what you'll be spending on your textbooks when you're ready to purchase them. But here's the other thing. You have an option of looking other places to see if you can get a better deal for your textbooks. If you decide to do that, you need to have the ISBN number. That is the unique identifier for that book, the, the edition, um, the version, it can be lots of different variations. So you need the ISBN number. It's got to match exactly and then you can go out and see if you can find that textbook in a format or um, at a cost that is more appealing to you. So this is a lovely feature. I, I go with students and look at this um, because, again, you want to be able to plan for what is it going to cost for the new semester for my classes. So 
check out our, our website for textbooks. The next thing we're going to talk about that I've kept saying this word advisors, advisors, we're going to go back to the PowerPoint screen and we are going to look at the advisors um, and the relevance of advisors at ACC. So everyone, whether you know it or not, is assigned an advisor, which is an important guide. Um, our advisors here at ACC are usually full time instructors. I am a general advisor. The purpose of the advisor is to help you develop your college plan. They can provide transfer information and career information. Um, if you would like to meet with your advisor for registration, and I highly recommend meeting with an advisor, whether it's me or your advisor of record, you need to get a hold of your advisor. If you're enrolled in one of your advisor's classes, you will have the office location, office hours, contact information such as telephone and email right on your syllabus from that instructor who is your advisor. Um, if you don't have your advisor for a class this semester, that information is still published. And when I meet with students, oftentimes I will print out their advisor's schedule. And so here we have an example of Megan Cameron, all of our um, fall schedule information is standardized now for accessibility for all students, whether it's electronic um, or any other way it's being published it is accessible. So you can see Megan Cameron, she has her office location. There's her office telephone number, her email um, breaks down Monday through Thursday. And um, she has bolded when her office hours are on Monday, 9 till 10 um, she, in her office, or a student could do WebEx. And if you go down to the bottom, um, she has a little note that says, please contact me via email if you would like to schedule a WebEx meeting, because she will send an invitation to you then. She's also noted that during final instruction week, the 16th week of courses here at ACC, her office hours will change because everybody's schedule changes at that time. So this information is published so that you can have access to your advisor um, outside of Megan Cameron's office store in BTC 126A. She will have this posted. This is very important information. So consider getting a hold of your advisor. Um, transferring. I talked about transferring as we were looking at the MPA, that important stuff. So the Michigan Transfer Agreement is designed to help it be smoother. If you are thinking of transferring, I highly recommend that you meet with an advisor. Um, meet with your advisor of record. They will have information. They might be able to share with you where they went to college, got their degree, what their experience was like. I'm a general advisor, so I do lots of research on transfer for students. But gather your information on those possible transfer sites you're interested in. Communicate with the representatives of that site. Um, whether you're doing it email or phone or in person, if they've come to our campus, communicate with them, ask some questions. And I tell students, you know, by the third time you're contacting that person, they're getting to know you and they'll say, hey, I was thinking about you. I have this information that you might be interested in. And then transferring, you should apply early because it will make you eligible for certain scholarships that will eventually close, meet all those deadlines. So the next screen we're going to look at is an example of a virtual transfer event that took place November 3rd. Um, there will be other ones. This is the Grand Valley State Rep or Grand Valley State University Rep, um, Mike Eichenberger. And I have also told students, you might not realize that you applied here to ACC. It didn't cost anything. It was an easy process. At universities, they often charge fees just to look at you. Um, and if you are applying to two, three, four different transfer sites, um, it could get into the hundreds of dollars because it's 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars for them to take a look at you to decide if they will let you be admitted to their university. 
So talking to a transfer rep, um, as they get to know you, many times they will offer you a fee waiver for those applications and save you $30, $60. This screen shows some of the things that we've done in the past. And COVID certainly changed things. Um, in the past, transfer reps would come to ACC and they'd have a table usually outside of our bookstore, which is a nice central location. Those reps would sit there, answer questions about all their programs at their university, um, give you a little bit of swag, maybe, you know, pens and um, lanyards, all those good things, and possibly fee waivers. Um, but since COVID, we're seeing more virtual ones. Um, so we just have to see what will happen. Right now, Mike Eichenberger was the only person that's scheduled so far this year. So I'm hoping it will pick up come spring semester, there'll be more reps that are reaching out to ACC students and providing those opportunities to get information. So look for those reps. And again, if you have questions, talk to your advisor, come and talk to me. Um, we want to get you the help that you need. So our ACC Registrar's Office. Our ACC Registrar, Sheila Roop, is a source of information. The office is located in Van Leer Hall 108. You've got all the phone numbers there. Um, there's their email where you can send things to them. They have a fax, but they help with registration. They get you registered. They can answer any and all questions. When you're getting ready to graduate, they do the graduate review, um, Sheila does, and I call it the audit to make sure you've gotten all the classes that are required for the degree completed. Um, they will do the MTA review, so you'll get that stamp as you prepare to transfer that could protect you. And they can do transcript requests. You go in, you tell them where you'd like your transcript sent, and then they are official. Anytime a student can put their hands either um, physically on their transcript or using a computer looking at it, a transcript, it is unofficial. But when a registrar office sends transcripts out, they are official and other colleges will accept them. So talk to Sheila, talk to the other people in the office, get your things taken care of. Early registration. So it has begun. Um, it will continue. Um, for through the end of the semester and into central registration. But be aware, as I said, final instruction week, that 16th week, advisor schedules are changed. And oftentimes advisors will not be available because they're testing students, they're helping their current students wrap things up and they just don't have the time to meet with someone who would like to register for classes. So do it early, get the classes you want at the times you want. Um, that's my recommendation to you. So register for your classes during early registration, meet with an advisor and communicate with the registrar's office, develop a short-term and a long-term college plan, and then work your plan. So finally, self-service has some videos for students that can give you um, an, inter an overview of what it's all about. So if you'd like to watch a quick, well done video, please take a look. We've also included the help desk number. Anytime you have issues with technology, they are wonderful there. You can call them, go stop by in person if you'd like to there in our center building close to the library, but they are available to answer your questions and get you the technology support that you need. Um, and finally, oh, we want your feedback. So please scan the QR code, complete the quick survey. We're always looking to improve what we are offering to students. And lastly, here's contact information for myself and Christy. We want you to contact us with any questions you have, that's what we're here for to help support you in your academic goals. So thanks for listening and um, get a hold of us if you have any questions. Thank you.